Hello, Monsignor, and welcome back to everyone from wherever you've been. Hope your week's been good. How's it going? Are you ready for this? I am. We got tea. Yeah. And then hidden behind the teas are uh, another gift from DM. What are these, Monsignor? They are known as sfogliatelle. What does that mean? Small leaves. Small leaves, because they look like small leaves? Well, they are really leaves of dough. They're very, very, very uh, fine. Um, I don't mean fine, I mean, uh, I can't describe it. But, <laughs> but it's very tasty. Delicious like leaves, is that what you're saying? It's leaves of dough. Ribbons, more better. So they don't taste like leaves off a tree? No, no. Have you ever eaten a leaf off a tree? No, I never did. So you actually don't know if it tastes as good or as bad as a leaf off a tree? No. They're really very, very delicate. Delicate, okay. Ribbons of dough. Mm. I was talking with another priest yesterday he was sharing some stories about you and his experience with you. <laughs> they were awesome stories. So I'm going to share some real quick. I'm going to see if you remember any of them. So you said that back in the day in the seminary, you all, uh, I guess the, I don't know, something, something happened, and the seminarians were being punished. So, they, it was Columbus Day weekend, and they were all supposed to stay in the seminary and whatever. Just, they had to be there, they couldn't go out. And I think they had a silent retreat, so they had to go, uh, grand silence, basically, for two to three days. And some of the guys were like, ah... Or like grumbling as they walked down the hallways. And he said, this priest I was with said that he was like, forget this. And a couple of them had snuck out. I think he said three of them had snuck out. Went to New York City and uh, they went to, uh, what's the restaurant near Lincoln Center? Anyway, there's a restaurant near Lincoln Center that a lot of people like to go to. And they, they ate a delicious meal and paid the check, uh, had their meal, had their drinks, or whatever it was, and they were about to pay their check, and they said, uh, the waiter said, oh, someone paid for your meal. And they look over, and they see you sitting there. And so they're, they're really nervous, because they're like, oh my goodness, it's someone on the faculty who's going to tell, he's kind of ironically paying, being nice right now, because, man, we're going to be punished. And so they walk over to you, and say, oh, Monsignor, thank you for the meal. Um, he says, uh, you know, I, ho I hope you don't tell the rector or the vice rector. And, and you said, you don't tell on me, I won't tell on you. <laughs> so <laughs> I didn't realize, Monsignor, that you were one to party a lot. No, I didn't know that you liked to party. I did do some partying in my day. Is that right? <laughs> do you remember this event? I don't recall this at all, no. I only tend to remember the near tragedies that I experienced, but anything pleasant uh, just what near tragedies? evaporates. What near tragedies are you talking about? Well, I don't know. I, having to deal with certain types of people. That's not a tragedy. That's just every day. Yeah, I know. I feel like tragedies are something that happen once and they're kind of extraordinary and outrageous. Would you call me extraordinary, Monsignor? And outrageous, yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he told me this other story. He said he heard you tell a homily once about Leonardo da Vinci. And it was his famous painting. And Leonardo is there and he finishes painting and 
one of his friends comes by and says, Oh my goodness, look how beautiful the faces of the disciples are. And, and look how beautiful the face of Jesus is. And look at those two goblets that are sitting there on the table. And, like the, and he just kept going on and on about the goblets. And Leonardo da Vinci quickly took his paintbrush and painted over the, the goblets. Mm-hmm. And he said, what are you doing? Those are the most beautiful part of the painting. He says, no, I want you to focus in on Jesus. And I think this was a, a Christmas homily. Mm-hmm. And he says, oh, yeah, we have all these lights and the presents and everything. But the point of Christmas is to focus in on Jesus. I think I, I went way longer than you would have done. But I think the, the gist of it was, yeah. That's a, a homily he remembered of yours, but he said it was very beautiful. I do recall that uh, the, uh, that thought of that situation that uh, that uh, evolves from the from the, the picture. Um, Is that a true story, uh, or did you I make it up? Suspect, uh, no, I just make it up. I picked it up somewhere. <laughs> Whether it actually historically happened or not, I don't. I can't guarantee that. But um, would you say that most of your homilies are made up? That they're not true. That you're just, you just, uh, you make lot. You lie in front of all the people. Is that what most of you do? Uh, no, I really haven't made a, a <laughs> career of lying to people. <laughs> but you lie to these people all the time about me. Uh, oh, sometimes the truth sounds so fantastic. Yeah, because as soon as the camera's off, you always tell me, Oh, Father Patrick, you're my favorite priest of all time. Oh, how I love you. Uh, I think you're good at just fantasizing. <laughs> Either that or perhaps you've been drinking. I don't know. Is that tea that you have in the cup? Uh, that, there is tea in here. That's true. <laughs> Whether there's other things, uh, I will not say. There is a question from this priest. Do you have any sort of, whether you've given something or you've experienced something, any sort of story or homily about Disney? Disney? Disney. Do you know Disney? Yeah, but I can't think of any. Uh, offhand, I can't think of it. I uh, haven't used uh, Disney uh, as a prop for one of my uh, homilies. Did you ever have a favorite Disney movie or character or theme? Uh, well, right now I can't recall. This this priest has a book that is called the the Gospel in Disney. And it's basically taking the different Disney movies. And taking, because there's usually a good theme and story behind it, or um, some message, and he connects it with scripture, which I think is cool. I, I think we can do that with every aspect of our lives, whether it's fantasy or not. Uh, yeah. All right. So I'll have to tell him nothing. You are of no use to him whatsoever. Right. I'm not here to be useful. What are you here for? More or less to keep you in, in line, in the check. Isn't that useful? Well, I'm doing lots of people a favor, that's true. What have you been doing, Monsignor? Oh, enjoying life. Oh. Oh, there was another question. Oh, yes. <laughs> Do you remember the in the scriptures, Judith, the prophetess Judith? Yes. Do you remember anything about her? Well, at the moment, I can't think of anything. I haven't used uh, ever having alluded to her. Yeah. Someone asked the question about the fourth glorious mystery, the Assumption. It says it has verses from Judith, Judith fifteen nine to ten to be precise. These verses seem to be praising Judith. And this person can't see how they refer to the assumption of the Virgin Mary. We didn't have Judith memorized, so we had to pull up the passage. 
So I'll read it. I'm going to read from verse 8 to 10. Then Joachim, the high priest, and the senate of the people, the people of Israel who lived at Jerusalem, came to witness the good things which the Lord had done for Israel, and to see Judith and to greet her. And when they met her, they all blessed her with one accord and said to her, You are the exaltation of Jerusalem. You are the great joy, the great glory of Israel. You are the great pride of our nation. You have done all this single-handed. You have done great good to Israel, and God is well pleased with it. May the Almighty Lord bless you forever. And all the people said, so be it. So why do you think that's used for the assumption, Monsignor? Well, I, uh, certainly for a feast of Our Lady, it foreshadows uh, the greatness of another woman that far, far surpasses uh, the great, the uh, greatness of uh, Judith. Judith. Yeah, hmm. yeah, that's right. And the fact that uh, all people call uh, call her great, basically. Hmm. I think that's the wonderful thing about Mary is that at the beginning of the uh, Gospel of Luke, uh, one of the famous lines in the Magnificat is, "All generations will call me blessed." <laughs> Mary does her part in salvation history. She brings Jesus Christ into the world. And because of her fiat miki secundum verbum tuum, because she said, may it be done unto me according to your word, her yes, in some ways, is the instrument of bringing the Lord into the world. And because of that, she is made great. She bears Christ in her womb and bears Jesus out into the world. Right. That's maybe that is what greatness is. That is what each of us is called to to have Christ within us and to bring Christ outwards into the world. Do you think all generations are call, are called to call you blessed, Monsignor? Uh, I rather doubt that question. But I think many people do call you great. People have nicknamed you the Great One. Yeah. What do you think of that? I think it's only right and just. <laughs> <laughs> and they give you pastries, and I steal one from you so that we can sh uh, share mm -hmm. in the generosity of our parishioners. Mm -hmm. <sighs> I think that's uh, enough time for today. Thank you again to DM for these pastries, to those who have supplied us with tea, to Monsignor Turo, of course, for instilling us with his wisdom, sharing some of the stories, and other people sharing their stories of Monsignor Turo. He is a rascal in his past. Would you say that? Would you say you're you're a sinner, Monsignor, as well? Oh yes, I, I certainly have to. Would uh, you call me a sinner, Monsignor? Um, by every reason conceivable, yes. <laughs> and yet we are all called to become like Mary, who was assumed into heaven. She was crowned Queen of Heaven and Earth. That was the next stage, so that all peoples would have a chance call her your, our queen and that's greatness that greatness is when she allowed the lord into her life and shared the lord with the world that's what we're all called to that's what monsignor has done for sure as what i'm struggling to do as i move forward in my priesthood thank all of you again monsignor would you like to bless the people all right in the language of the church benedictio dei patris et filii et spiritus sancti Descended supervos at monia semper. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Bye, everyone.